Hey everybody, this is Double RPG here, and welcome to my new Let's Play, where I'm going to be showing you Donkey Kong Country uh, Returns for the Nintendo Wii. So, yeah, I bet most of you were probably wondering where my Let's Play of Mega Man 2 was located. Well, I've been kind of taking a break from doing LPs for a while since I have been trying to get back on track with doing uh, my reviews and stuff, and for those of you who are waiting for my new Let's Play, well, not Let's Play, but my new review of uh, New Super Mario Brothers U, as well as Kirby Superstar Ultra, which I am going to be doing that afterwards, then, yeah, that's the case. I I'm, you know, trying my hardest as I can to try to get back on track with that. But, in the meantime, not to, not to keep you guys astray from any content, I might as well go ahead and do something uh, that is very familiar in my territory that I have done for three games already. And yes, I'm talking about the Donkey Kong Country Trilogy, where I'm taking a look at its sequel to possibly a new series called Donkey Kong Country Returns that was developed by the Austin-based Retro Studios. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to start a new game here. And now there's going to be some rules for this Let's Play. I'm going to be playing it one player, and I'm not sure if I'm going to get all the puzzle pieces, but I'll try to get as many as I can. And we will be going through all the levels, including the temples, as well as the Golden Banana Temple at the end of this Let's Play. And that should be pretty exciting, and I will not keep you waiting any further, and let's get right into it, shall we? Donkey Kong! Now, as many of you are wondering, why am I doing this Let's Play? Well, mainly because of me doing those Let's Plays of Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo, as well as me trying out Donkey Kong Jungle Beat for the Wii not too long ago, which I'm actually very surprised how good of a game that is, despite it being underrated and there being certain issues with it but i won't get into it any further than that as we have the most recent donkey kong game that has released on the wii and also got a re-release not too long ago on and then on the nintendo 3ds where there is newer content as well as there as the game being more open to casuals now what's going on here well looks like we have the tiki's coming out of the volcano to cause havoc on dk island and Oh boy, there's Horton Here's a Who, but with the Tiki, we see Horton Here's a Hypnosis! Yes, as well as the Zebra from Madagascar, and I think the Giraffe was in Madagascar, but I don't know about the Squirrel, I think that was from Over the Hedge. <laughs> oh, so many, so many 3D, I mean, so many CG animo animated movie references. One, Dr. Seuss, the other, from DreamWorks, essentially. At least I think Over the Hedge was a DreamWorks production, and I can't I can't say for certain, but, oh no, looks like they're stealing the Banana Horde, and not the Kremlings this time. Which, ironically enough, the Kremlings are not the main enemy in this game. As we have seen, the Tikis take the role of the main antagonists over the Kremlings. And here we see Diddy Kong getting all mad that the Banana Horde was stolen, and he's going after them. Well, the dumb-minded Donkey Kong comes out to see what's happening, and his bananas are being stolen! But... Oh no, not Donkey Kong! Is he gonna get hypnotized too? Is he? Of course not! <laughs> I mean, the guy is so so dumbfounded. He doesn't even need to be hypnotized. <laughs> Which, ironically enough, I r learned recently why he was called Donkey Kong from Miyamoto's eyes. But yeah, anybody who steals Donkey Kong's bananas, they're bound to pay. And here's our first step. We mo shaking! It's time to beat up that Tiki. And after beating him up, and I was expecting him to beat it up and push it a lot further, but yeah, we have beaten up that Tiki, and we have ourselves a battle to go through. More and more like an adventure. But if we come in here, this is obviously referencing the Donkey Kong Country, and there's the TV right there that plays the Donkey Kong Country theme. Well, obviously it's a rendition of David Wise's theme of Donkey Kong Country from his days at Rare. But yeah, this game not only is Retro Studios' best game by far, but it acts more as an homage to both the Stamper Brothers and Rare when they created the Donkey Kong Country trilogy during the Super Nintendo days. So yeah, that's a little reference right there. And if we go in here, this of course is another reference, but at least you have free reign to travel around in here. And that is a new mechanic in the game, as well as the banana coins returning from Donkey Kong Country 2 and 3. But that new mechanic with the puzzle piece, if you collect all the puzzle pieces in all the levels, you can actually unlock concept art. Yes, this game has unlockables. Who would have thunk it? And uh, it should be common in Retro Studios' own standards that they 
present unlockables in their games because, well, they've done that with the Metroid Prime game, so why not this one, right? Yeah, I thought so. And this is also a new mechanic, blowing. Basically, you have to duck down, and then you just shake the Wiimote, and you will see Donkey Kong blow air like crazy. You want to see him blow air like crazy? Let's see how long he can do it. Uh, this is probably not going to work because I'm having, because I have the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Oh, here we go. Sorry, I was just trying to, I was trying to remember how to beat down. Yeah, that's something that's returning from Donkey Kong Country as well with Donkey Kong's, uh, ground slap ability, but instead it's using his fists. But yeah, uh, you can actually hold DK's breath for as long as you want when blowing it. So, you can just keep swinging the, I mean, shaking the Wiimote like that to make his breath blow wild. When you're ducking down, that is. And we see the Tiki's are stealing more of the bananas. But it's alright, we will get them back as soon as we can. And this is going to be a long adventure. Probably at least, I don't know, maybe 20 to 30 episodes, but in between that. I may show off some... Uh, I may show off some gameplay from the Secret World 9 that is in Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D for the 3DS. Since I do have that on me, I may show that as a bonus, but after we complete this LP. You know, just to show off some of the basic differences that was in both the console version and this version. And you can see the butterflies on there. That's a really, that's really nice attention to detail that this game has so much color to it. Yes. Have I mentioned that? That the game has good color? Yes, something that many games in this day and age seem to be lacking. Mostly coming from Western developers, where most of their games are just gray and full of brown. Anyway, we get this DK barrel and we unlock Diddy Kong. Now, interesting thing to know about Donkey Kong Country Returns is that in this game, you don't, uh, what do you call it? You don't actually control Diddy Kong as you mostly control Donkey Kong when you're in one player because Diddy Kong's on his back, but you can control Diddy Kong unless if you're playing two-player co-op. Which, I don't know why they do that, but hey, I guess they wanted more. Wanted you to feel more in control with Donkey Kong, since I know many people were kind of complaining about Donkey Kong feeling clunky in the original Donkey Kong Country, but, you know, I can't complain. I love playing both characters either way, so I'm sort of indifferent in that sense. And as you can tell, most of the animals that you are going up against are very different. You're not going up against Naughties or Neckies or anything like that, as they are very original for this game. But I'm not that very common, or I'm not that... <laughs> I've seemed to be in the dark mostly with their enemy names. But with the bosses, we can know exactly what enemy names they go by because, well, they say it right before, right before we go in those stages. And speaking of stages, well, ones that are bonus, this is actually a return. Bonus stages. But there's more of a purpose to the bonus stages as opposed to the original Donkey Kong Country. So it actually falls more in tune to the uh, sequels in terms of getting an achievement with going through the bonus stages. And every time when you go through those bonus stages, we actually do get puzzle pieces instead of crim coins. Because, well, you know... Kremlings are not a part of the game, so they might as well compensate us with something else, I suppose. Okay, propeller flowers, and we're going to blow at them again, and we will get some goodies. Let's try this. Okay, we got some more bananas. Now, there's a new type of banana batch, but you notice those uh, regular banana batches we get in the original Donkey Kong Country, they held at least ten bananas. But in this game, they hold five. Because there is a bigger type of banana batch, but I will be showing you that once we get to the third stage of the jungle. And also, collecting the Kong letters will not give you a 1-up, as they are used for a different purpose. And this game is also pretty good, too, because there are secrets like this that may seem out of the ordinary. It's like, hey, can I walk through this? And then you see that foreground object move out of the way, and you can actually grab some puzzle pieces that are hidden within. Sometimes they may, may be something different. But who knows? Okay, and this is a different type of exit mechanic. If you hit the barrel when it says DK on it, here, watch what will happen. Uh, that was not what I was going for, but I will take that. Anyway, <laughs> uh, that is the first stage completed, but I will show you what that mechanic does once we get to it. Hopefully I can do it in the next stage. 
It should be easy in the next stage because sometimes those bouncing trampolines can make it, or bouncing flowers rather, can make it a bit, ta a tad bit difficult. So as you can as you can see, after completing the level and gaining all the puzzle pieces, that actually updates our image gallery, which I said we will be able to view concept art of this game. So yeah, that should be exciting. And this game is also infamous for being far more challenging than the original. I would say it's about, uh, probably far more challenging than the other games too, to be quite frank. So, uh, yeah, let's go to our next stage, which is called King of Kling. But before that, let's take a look at the inventory. As you can guess, the inventory is uh, empty right now. And they are a bit more, Retro Studios was a bit lenient to add an inventory that you can use within the levels. Like, for example, we can use squawks, who can find uh, puzzle pieces that are hidden within the levels. We can use a heart boost in case we need to put in an extra hit. Or if you want to go uh, if you want to go for broke with heart boost, then go with banana juice, as it will give you 10 points of damage. Before, uh, it, will it will bathe you in banana bathe your characters in banana juice, where they can take 10, ha uh, 10 hits before it completely disintegrates, and you have to go back to, you know, suffering the normal damage, like usual. Or if not, then you can just remove them any way you want. I won't be using the items that much, maybe except for the banana juice and some of the levels, but I'll try my best not to do it that much within, like, the first half. Because the first half, in my opinion, is really not all that difficult. I would say by the time we get to World 6, that the game will start to get a bit more challenging. Anyway, let's go to level 1-2, or World 1, level 2, King of Kling. And this level also introduces a new mechanic that is exclusive to this game, and exclusive for the DS version as well, but, you know, it's exclusive in this game nevertheless. Another piece of music, aside from Jungle Hijinks, makes a grand return. Now, and this is the second half of the DK Island Swing from David Wise or Jungle Hijinks, where it has become its own, uh, what do you call it, become its own track for this game done by Kenji Yamamoto from Metroid fam and Metroid Prime fam. Anyway, this is our new mechanic, Clinging Onto Moss. You, this mechanic will actually help us get through, uh, help us get through areas where we have no chance of actually traversing through if there are a bunch of spikes underneath or if there are pitfalls or whatever. But yeah, that's one of the new mechanics in this game that adds t adds into the game's variety and the gameplay really well. And I think this is something that it's really, really awesome to have. I mean, sure, we may have had uh, clinging on ropes and all that from the uh, Donkey Kong Country 2 and 3 and Donkey Kong 1, in a sense, but clinging on the moss, it's, a, it's kind of a new mechanic in a way to you know, kind of traverse through things when scaling or scaling horizontally or vertically, but you get what I'm talking about. Okay. And, yeah, I'm just shimmying all the way around that moss wheel. Can we call it a moss wheel? Eh, sounds kind of saucy, really. And go ahead and beat down on that flower, which will give us items, which I don't think I mentioned, by the way. Sometimes if you pound those things on the ground, those yellow glowing uh, plants, they will actually hold either bananas and sometimes banana coins. And I think uh, they just give us bananas. Oh well. So I think how the process of this Let's Play is going to go is that we're going to be doing at least two, uh, at least three levels at best for every video that we do. So, and probably. Uh, yeah, three le uh, three levels for every video, and possibly three videos every world we uh, go through in this game. That's why I said this LP might take less than 30 episodes to go through, depending on if we do not screw up quite a bunch, which probably we will. Oh yeah, I don't want to get that just yet. And I'm traveling more through the moss wheels. And basically I'm just grabbing the bananas because, well... They are the, essentially the coins of Mario World in this game. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And here we have ourselves another bonus stage. And basically we have to bounce on this trampoline and we can grab all the banana coins, banana bunches, and bananas that are present. But make sure you don't fall off like I just about did, or else you won't be able to complete it to get the puzzle piece. Oh, damn it, I missed. Go ahead and grab that, and we get ourselves the 
Is it the third puzzle piece, or is it the fourth one? Nope, it is the fourth one. Cool. Oh, man. It's just, looking at this game, I just really enjoy looking at the color. <laughs> I am really surprised that many that a game of this caliber managed to have color in this day and age. Can't remember the last game that had really good color. Probably, uh, by 2010 standards, probably Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, and that's saying a lot right there for a fighting game. But as of recently, I don't know. Uh... Ah, uh, I can't even say for certain. Probably Sonic Colors, or Sonic Generations, but... Again, Sonic Generations came out in 2011, but, uh, I don't know which game preceded that in terms of the presentation. Maybe New Super Mario Brothers. Oh, that didn't even hold anything. Shame. And you can even pound when you're on the moss. So that's also pretty cool in itself, too. Instead of just pounding on the ground, you can just pound on the moss as well. So that way you can beat up the bush around with, the, with those other... Uh, plants that are hanging about. Like that. And sometimes you'll be close enough to get the items anyway, so you don't have to jump off. Whoops. Missed. Oh, not anymore. Let's see what do we got down here. Okay, we got the letter N. And I'm trying to be careful when going through the moss because of the Venus flytraps that are just sticking above and below and on the sides of the level. And you want to duck down to make sure you don't get hit by them. Yeah, as I said... Whoa, crap, 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 crap. I did not mean to do that, folks. Let's try again. Get up, get back over here. There we go. Good. Yeah, so I have to, you have to try to be careful when you're doing this because this game, as I said, is more infamous for being... I mean, more famous for being... I mean, I guess you could say more well-known for being more challenging than the other games, but yeah, that's quite saying a lot right there. Of course, I do think that this game is challenging, but not until we get to at least World 5 or World 6, rather. And you can even walk on the wheels, but you want to be careful if you want to get these bananas, which I probably should be, you know, I probably should still be going, instead of just wasting time in one spot and going to the other. And yes, as I said, this game did re-release on the 3DS just recently, and I have to say, for a 3DS port, it's actually not that bad. Although there are some things to nitpick about, like, uh... I guess you could say the frame rate? Wait a minute, did I? Oh yeah, I did get it. Uh, sorry, I wasn't sure if I got the the other puzzle piece or not. But yeah, I guess the one of the big complaints about the 3DS version was its frame rate. But then again, Raymond, Le uh, Raymond Origins on the 3DS also had that same problem where it wasn't a constant 60 frames a second. That was more half of that. Okay, we got that. Oh. Make sure I don't hit it. Hit that thing. Uh, tiki pinwheel? Okay, let's see if I can get the DK without screwing up. There we go! You can actually pound really fast to either obtain a lot of bananas, a lot of balloons, or one-up balloons, or a lot of banana coins in the process. So, that's actually a pretty good mechanic right there, in case if you need to get some extra things. Alright, and we have obtained all the puzzle pieces within this level, so let's get out of here. Oh man, I am wasting so much time. I didn't even realize we were near 20 minutes. Oh boy. I guess I had a lot to explain about this game, but yeah. You know what? As I as I as I said, let's go by uh let's just go by what I originally stated. Uh how many levels we go through every video. Anyway, here we are introduced to Cranky Shop where he will actually help us give us uh, items that we can buy with the banana coins that we have. But we're not going to be buying a whole lot, as we're just only going to be buying one thing. The key right here. Oh, sure! Take the easy way out while I shake my cane at you. Yeah. Thanks, old man. But uh, let's get out of here. So, yeah, as you can tell, Squawks, the... Uh, the heart container with the plus, I mean, the uh, first aid sign, and the banana juice are all present there. Now with the key, we can actually open up gateways to levels that we that we could not get access to, or that we cannot get access to normally. So you have to buy the key from Cranky within every world you travel in. So anyway, let's go to the last level for today's video, and it's called Treetop Bop. And let's go ahead and play it. 
There's also some Easter eggs in this game that I'll be making a brief mention to once we find them within the game, but let's not get a, a get ahead of ourselves, okay? Okay, we're here in the DK Island Swing theme song, or Jungle Hijinks theme song for Treetop Bop again, so I'm not complaining. I love that song. And of course, with Donkey Kong Country games, you always have to appreciate the music because that's what actually made the game so incredible. Or made the game so incredible. Well, except for the third game, I'd say that the G Game Boy Advance version of Donkey Kong Country 3 had the better, or the more superior soundtrack, but yeah. Okay, grab these banana coins. I'm gonna try my best to keep Diddy on me as much as I can because he has the rocket pack, and if you have the rocket pack on you, it will save you a lot of trouble with some of the jumps that you have to go through. Let's go over here, and we get ourselves a puzzle piece right over here. And get back over yonder. <laughs> oh, crap. <sighs> Yeah, as you can see, I'm clearly just taking my time trying to find those puzzle pieces. Let's go ahead and grab this K while we're at it. Because with the K, I mean, with the Kong letters, you want to obtain them. Oh, by the way, if you saw that big banana batch right there, yeah, that's the one that gives you 10 bananas instead of just the regular banana batch that we saw from the previous games. And we have giant mutant frogs right there. Yellow ones that can actually move. I guess they kind of take place of the Kremlings for the, one, the, the, the critters that can actually jump. I think that's supposed. I think that's the case. Ooh. Get get your coin. Yes. I love jumping on enemies multiple times because you can actually obtain their coin. You can obtain extra coins from them. It's kind of like that one glitch in Donkey Kong Country where if you have Diddy jump or bounce on top of the Crusher, you could actually get more. What do you call it? You can actually get more balloon lives from them. Which, I'm not going to post a link to the video, but, you know, that's just, I just thought that was actually a cool and very unique uh, gimmick. And here we uh, have the only animal buddy that is making a return. Well, one of the only animal buddies, the one that you can actually ride on. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to my rhino friend, Rambi the Rhinoceros. And he's uh, pretty much controls the same, like Donkey Kong Country, except with the control schemes of the Wii, he actually does more than just what you'd expect. And as you would have guessed, there is a block right there, but it has Rambi's face on it, so that means Rambi can only destroy it. And that will give us access to this bonus level. And this bonus level, we have to obtain the bananas within these platforms. Most of the time, you would actually want to have a second player doing this, so that way they can obtain the collectibles along with you instead of you having to do it by yourself most of the time, but who cares? As long as the gameplay's solid and you can actually get through this without any problems, then you should be golden. Okay, got it. See? Case in point. <laughs> Alright. That is the third bonus game we completed within this video. And there's one more in this stage, we, which we'll be going through. And if you shake the Wiimote constantly when he's running like that, you can actually uh, ram through the debris and you can run faster and that kind of stuff. I probably should have used Rambi to bounce on top of those enemies, but I'm not sure if that would have worked. There's DK Barrel up there, but we don't need it. And notice that when you're using the when you're using the jetpack, when you have Rambi on you, that it will it it will actually not it well how do you put it? It will actually. Uh, wear out really fast, uh, as opposed to when you have DK. I'd say it takes half the time to uh, use up the the uh, the rocket pack for Diddy instead of uh, when you're on Rambi the Rhino, when all Kongs are on there, except for him just normally being on Donkey Kong. Okay, here's the fourth one. This one's a little bit more tricky. You, uh, you have to time the uh, barrel, whichever angle it's going towards. Oh, wait a minute. It's not supposed to go in an angle, is it? Oh, yes, it does. Good. And we get ourselves the fourth puzzle piece from the, or a puzzle piece from the fourth bonus game that we went through in this video today. Okay. Now before we, uh, before we, oh shoot. I didn't want to do that. Oh, anyway, I could just do it from up here. There. Now we have all the uh, Kong letters for this level. But go over here, we actually are entered ourselves into a banana heaven. 
and there is a puzzle piece, and that is the fifth and final one for this level. So let's go ahead and shimmy on out of here. And we gain more banana coins in the process. Okay, with all that said and done, with those three levels completed, I think we're probably at a good spot to where we can go ahead and we can wrap up things here. So, next time on Double RPG Let's Play with Donkey Kong Country Returns on the Nintendo Wii, we're going to be going through the next uh, three stages, uh, World 1, Level 4, 5, and 6. So this Let's Play should be very fun, as it's one that I have fond memories of, as, you know, for being out for over, for a little over two years, it still holds up very nicely. But yeah, we're going to be having a lot of fun with this Let's Play. And of course, if Nintendo hits with the third match third-party content on YouTube, I'm still going to keep them up regardless, because, well, why would I not? Anyway, guys, this is Double RPG, and I will see you in the next episode. Catch you later. Peace.